just bidding up my Quest Pro here. Let me actually come here and transition. All right, so today I thought I would just do a little bit of a setup tour of how I have things configured for when I'm playing Star Citizen. And you could really do this with pretty much any um, flight sim. Batteries are low on my controllers, but that should be okay for tonight. So I have virtual desktop installed on my headset. So virtual desktop, the standalone app on the Quest Pro is what I use. You could do this with um, any, uh, the Pico, Quest Pro, uh, Quest 2, Quest 3. Uh, hold on, I need to start this. So um, you have to use the disable render pose um, flag when launching virtual desktop streamer on the uh, desktop computer you're streaming to. Um, it's VRK has a video on how to do this, which I'll probably link after this live stream in the description of the live stream. Um, but yeah, once I'm, I have virtual desktop running, it's going to at some point detect my computer. And now I can see my computer screens. Um, you can switch between your monitors by using the, uh, what is this, the Y key, Y button. Um, and then additionally, I have a keyboard shortcut that uh, disables it as well. All right, looks like I have some viewers right now, so I need to figure out how to get my chat to show up. Although, it's possible that the reason that I have viewers is because of um, OBS. So let me go ahead and come to Docs. If I open up the chat, is it going to have the YouTube chat? No, it's not. So that means I need to find my video that's currently streaming. Oh, how do I do this? I should have I should have done this earlier. Uh, all right, let's go content. Let's go live. All right, let's pull this up. Okay. And let's go ahead and just open up this link. And let's go ahead and take the chat here. Pop it out. And where do we have it? All right, we have the chat here. Let's go ahead and just run a quick test. Do you see this? All right, so hopefully chat will work. Um, I know that one of my friends tried to leave a message on my stream. Was it last night? I can't remember if it was last night or not, and it did not show up for me. So hopefully that won't be the case this time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, control shift A, switch here. Um, I'm going to switch camera inputs. Um, let's go ahead and start up droid cam. Um, actually, no, I need to go to, let's come to main. Let's go uh, display. All right, so for display, we're gonna to wanna to show my LG monitor for now. Okay, that works. So we're gonna quickly just transition here. So you should be able to see what I'm seeing on this here monitor. Um, let me just make sure that that's the case. How much of my display is displayed? Not all of it. All right. So let's go ahead and Minimize that. Come back to main. Transition. Okay, cool. So, oh, awesome. Prop Knuckles. I see you now. Uh, okay, perfect. So, let me come on to here. So, pretty much the technology that I'm using to make all of this work. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is obviously Game Engine, because um, my simulator is the Yaw 2. You could technically do this, though, with um, any motion simulator. 
um, this would work regardless. The motion compensation would be a little bit different because the yaw two has a um, direct, uh, like, built-in motion compensation um, tracker, and obviously not all simulators have that. Um, to install it, it's all inside of here. Again, it's VRK has a really great video demonstrating that. Um, feel free, by the way, um, Prop Knuckles or anyone else on the stream to ask questions as I'm doing this. Uh, yeah, so the next thing that I'm using is Joystick Gremlin. And the reason that Joystick Gremlin is being used is because one, it's useful in Star Citizen because you can bind a uh, keyboard key so that you can use it as a modifier with your profiles. Um, Buzzkiller, his bindings for dual VKBs, which I have, um, that requires you to use Joy to Key, but you can actually use Joystick Gremlin, and I prefer Joystick Gremlin compared to Joy to Key, um, just because Joystick Gremlin is a little bit more powerful, um, and you can also remap axes to a virtual driver. The reason that's important is because inside of Game Engine, um, I have the uh, direct input mapped to my VJoy driver. So basically what's happening is, like say on my uh, right stick, the x-axis binds to the x-axis on the VJoy device, y-axis to the z-rotation, and z-rotation to the x-rotation. And what this lets me do is inside of the game engine profile, I can map all of those on one input type to the simulator outputs. Um, otherwise, you'd only really be able to control your simulator with one stick and not both. Um, it would be a similar process, I think, in SRS, um, but I'm not really a pro at using Sim Racing Studio. So take that with a grain of salt. Okay, so with this, there's also another app that I'm using, which is OpenTrack. So open track is generally what people will use for um, face tracking with track IR. So it's basically a special type of camera that has a filter on it so that it can only see infrared lights. And then you have a little thing you attach to your face that has infrared lights on it. And um, it uses the infrared lights to kind of determine when your head is moving. What we're going to be doing, um, because uh, Virtual desktop for uh, standalone headsets has a really neat feature where you can have Steam VR running and it will still track the inputs of your headset and your controllers. Um, it won't actually track button clicks, but it'll track the um, motion data. And so you can run Steam VR while you're in the actual application view looking at your monitors. Um, so it's it's kind of like a weird thing where you're connected to Steam VR, but you're still looking at the native app that runs inside the headset without going into the VR view. The reason that's nice is that motion compensation can be a little jumpy and laggy. Um, so this allows you to have your image stay pinned to your face without all the jumpiness that comes with the motion compensation. Um, so these are the three main desktop tools that you'll be using. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start Steam VR and get the Steam VR view set up. Hopefully it won't my index instead. my index instead. Let's exit Steam VR. I'm going to just unplug my index actually. Oh, I should have probably waited till Steam VR had stopped before I did that. Um, let's see here. Steam VR, exit. Yes, Star Citizen. Uh, it, it's kind of like obviously it's not actually in VR. But it gives you a little bit of a estimation, I'd say, of 
VR, I kind of like call it, it's not 3D, it's like 2.5D, because um, obviously you don't have the motion controls. Uh, Star Citizen. Yeah, so the, um, the Star Citizen virtual joystick is different from the V-Droid driver. So when you install... Gosh, Steam VR keeps trying to start up. What the heck? Um, sorry, yeah, I just have Steam VR keeps popping up. So the virtual driver that Star Citizen uses is different from the VJoy driver that's used with Joystick Gremlin. So when you install Joystick Gremlin and the VJoy driver, I'm repeating myself. It's different from, oh my goodness, why is, I'm going to have to force close Steam. Hold on. <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right. I should not have unplugged my index. Uh, right. Steam, exit Steam. Yeah, so um, there isn't any conflict between the VJoy driver that's used for Joystick Gremlin and the virtual joystick that Star Citizen uses, because the Star Citizen virtual joystick with your mouse is actually um, like a built-in like tool of the game. It's not like a virtual driver. At least, I haven't had any conflicts with it, so I'm assuming that's the case. I need to turn off my... <sighs> base stations. Darn it. Let's come on. Okay, you should be able to hear me now. Um, so MyQuest Pro has this amazing software bug that when it moves from a certain amount of light to a different amount of light, um, it basically shows a weird pixelated pattern, um, and then it completely loses all tracking entirely um, and goes into 3 off mode. And I don't know how to resolve it except for turning the headset off and back on again. Um, and I couldn't figure out my audio setup while I was doing that. So, yeah, that's what that was. Um, anywho, uh, back to where uh, where we were. Um, to answer your question, Knuckles, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you can... I think there actually is a way that you can map your mouse to 
um, the VJoy driver. So you could theoretically control your yaw or any motion simulator for that matter using your mouse. I haven't personally played around with that though. Um, but it should theoretically be possible. Um, I do know that you can use your mouse as an input into uh, the direct input, but uh, yeah, that, that's something that you might just research and see. Basically, I would Google like, uh, you know, joystick gremlin mouse VJoy driver. That might point you in the right direction. I know it's technically possible, but all right, let's get back to where I was and start Steam VR. Okay, this time we're in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the Steam VR view really quick. And we are going to pop into here and display the VR view. So what you're going to be seeing inside the VR view is, well, right now, nothing, right? But, and I'm going to kind of show you what this process looks like um, without, uh, you know what, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to restart Steam VR actually, because look at that, motion compensation and the yaw tracker got blocked when it was crashing. Okay, so we're going to have to restart Steam VR. I look forward to the day when all of this software is in a much better state because the hardware honestly feels so much better than the software right now when it comes to motion compensation. Um, hopefully Infuse will fix a lot of that. Um, but we'll find out. On is it Steam VR? Launch Steam VR. Gonna work this time, or are you gonna tell me the app is already running? Great. I broke my Steam VR installation. <laughs> Let's go ahead and exit Steam again. Let's start Steam up again. All right, Steam's now running. All right, let me actually see, because it doesn't look like that actually killed Steam VR either. Let's pop open Task Manager. Why is it on this display? Uh, looking for Steam. Yeah, I'm not seeing it running. So it should be good. Let's try this. Interesting VR. Let me do this. I'm going to get my right controller charging. Okay, here we are. Excellent. Do we have the Steam? All right, we have the VR view. Okay, so <clears throat> this tracker obviously is not in a good spot. My simulator's actually over here where I'm looking at. I'm going to show what the process to get motion compensation calibrated actually looks like while I'm standing right here. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to do it from the chair um, and I'm going to switch cameras when I do that. So pretty much what you're doing is when you're sitting inside of the chair, um, you need to first configure inside of here your motion compensation and you're setting the head distance. And basically what that is, is the distance of your head from the center of your device's rotation. So I have my chair backed up all the way with the seat forward, a generous amount, mostly for weight distribution reasons. And so pretty much I find that like this distance is about where I need to have the yaw centered, uh, or at least the, um, yeah, like basically 25 millimeters is what it is for me. It's going to be different depending on your setup. 
So what you would do is from inside of the chair, the first thing is you would center with the uh, like Oculus centering or Pico, whatever you have. Then you would go in, and I lean my head back when I do this, so I have a constant uh, reference point. You would recenter, and you'll see when I recenter, it changes the position of the motion compensation, like so. Then you would come into the motion compensation menu. You would check the box. You'd hit apply. It'll do this weird little thing. Um, and then once this is done, you can't really recenter. Otherwise, it'll just screw things up. So we're going to undo the motion compensation for now. And I'm going to go ahead and switch camera devices and move over to my chair. Hopefully this controller doesn't fully die on me. Let me actually give it just a little bit of a touch up right there while I do this. So I need to turn on droid cam. Oh, thank goodness. All right, let's start that. And cam. Let's go ahead and enable droid cam. Disable this. Okay. Voila. Uh, really quick while we're here. So just kind of a tour of my simulator itself. Um, so I have the three off yaw. So that's 360 degrees of yaw rotation and 50 backwards for pitch, 15 forward. Um, then I have uh, 20 degrees of roll in either direction. Um, why do I have that there? I'll put that in my pocket. Um, as far as my mounting solution, it's kind of a custom thing done with V slots. Um, and it is height adjustable with these here. Let me make sure. Okay, we didn't lose that. Same thing on this side. Uh, for actual adjustments, I have two kind of custom, like, uh, star nut things here. These just have um, a bolt that go down, and then it has the V slot locking thing down there whatever it's called. Uh, and then they're both sides are on two sets of gantries. Um, that's just for stability reasons. Um, then I have a powered USB hub, which connects to the USB hub on the yaw, which is connected to a slip ring, which allows me the 360 degrees rotation. Uh, newer versions of the yaw though, come with a wireless USB 3.0 solution, which in some ways is probably better than what I have here. So, but this works. Uh, but it only works at USB 2.0 speeds. So I'm just going to get my phone clipped in here. Uh, and getting in and out is just a matter of sliding. Oh, and I forgot. I have to turn the simulator on first. So let's go do that. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. This is still running, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, we're still good. Oh, uh, do do. Just check the dashboard first. Let's recenter and start device. Okay, we're good. So I'm gonna slide this forward. Gonna get this controller back. That wasn't much time to charge, but hopefully it's enough that it won't die on me. Um, and in the next couple of minutes, so I'll go ahead and hop into the chair like so. Put these back. Slide this back. Okay, things are working. Just lock into place. Like so. Okay, and now I'm secured. So I'm gonna just do that again. I'm right, taking this. I'm recentering with the Oculus button. Then I am recentering from Steam VR. And now to test this, make sure it's good. I'm going to spin around a little bit and you'll see that green is staying pretty centered. So 
can kind of test with this and know that you're pretty well compensated, or at least properly positioned. If it wasn't, the little green thing would be, like, spinning around in front of me. So, let's enable motion compensation. Apply. Then I just exit out of SteamVR by double-tapping the uh, menu button on the left controller. And this brings me into the virtual desktop view. So what I'm going to do now is hop into here and start open track. And you'll see that when I'm moving my head, it's all like changing the values. But if I spin, the values stay relatively at zero. I mean, it's going to fluctuate a little bit. So I have a small dead zone configured in open track. Um, if you come here, output. Uh, is somewhere. I don't remember how I did it. Uh, might be in mapping. Nope, it's not in mapping. I don't know where it is. Maybe I do it inside of Star Citizen. Um, the reason it's looking offset in this view is just because it's left eye, right eye, like so. But I'm going to go ahead and close this for performance reasons. And come into Steam and change my view so that got main, turn off display, transition, and I'm going to start up Star Citizen. So that's kind of the setup tour, though. Um, I'll probably try and go through and cut this stream down into smaller clips or you know, at some point I would like to start making shorts, so maybe I'll do a short on the technology that's used for this. This is positioned in a decent position, I think. Um, I don't know why I would say decent position in a decent position. So this is something that you can't really see very well, um, because obviously I'm inside the headset. Uh, let me, you know what, actually? Got anything during IAE? Yes. So I purchased a um, Zeus CL and a Zeus ES. Um, the main reason is I kind of am planning the, on the Zeus CL being my kind of daily driver um, for Pyro. Uh, that or the seal, and it just depends on, I guess, the mission that I'm doing. And then for the uh, ES, the reason I have this ES is just because I want to have um, a... Uh... It, actually, the reason is just CCU training in the future. It's a concept ship, um, so it's going to increase in value, and I'll trade it for something else out that's a little bit higher in value. I'll probably try to trade it for another concept ship, honestly, and just continue CCU chaining um, regular old concept ships uh, until eventually I get to something bigger. Um, one thing I would actually like to do is show what it looks like from inside the headset. So, is that going to work? No, that's not going to work. So I have right now my main display set up um, so it's pinned to my face so let's see how I'm gonna do this so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna put you down really quick and I need you to stay on play stay on okay this is kind of janky um, all right, so I can't tell how well you can see inside of here, um, but you'll see I'm right now moving my headset, but the screen you'll see just stays pinned. So it's like this, and SteamVR is still running for the track IR. So this is basically how um, it looks from my view. So for me, it's basically like I am just, uh, like, 
yeah, it's just a 2D screen, but at least with a 2D screen, I have the head tracking movement. Um, and so it's pretty immersive for the most part. And yeah. So I'm going to go ahead now and we're going to minimize OBS. And we're going to come here into options, graphics. For whatever reason, my graphics settings are not saving. So I have to reconfigure them every single time that I want to come in here. Uh, face tracking, we're going to enable it during FPS. Okay, great. So I'm going to actually just hop into Arena Commander for now. Um, no, 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 we'll, we'll actually, we'll hop into the reverse. Yeah, we'll do the reverse. Let me also minimize this. Um, just make sure Star Citizen is showing up properly. It looks like it is. All right. Okay, so we're inside. I'm going to also hook up my... Uh, What you call these seatbelts? Because um, the yaw is kind of terrifying to be in. <laughs> Not gonna lie, when I'm pitching and rolling around and all that jazz. So it's nice to uh, be secured in. See how the performance goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, so smooth. It's amazing how smooth this game is when you're not at Microtech. I don't think the FPS is higher than it was when... Um, I have to enable head tracking. There we go. I don't think it's higher than when I, you know, play without all of this extra stuff that I'm doing. But, uh, you know, this is just... The sacrifice for immersion. I think the elevators are busted. It wouldn't be Star Citizen any other way. Okay. Well, I guess that means I'm doing free flying, which is fine. That's fine. I wasn't planning on being on too long anyways. Uh, let's just do some offline free flying then. Um, we can do, wait, oh, what are these master modes? I don't want to learn master mode on stream, so we're just going to do a regular free flight. We're gonna do this on um, security post Korea, I guess. Uh, vehicle selection. Let's go ahead and just do it inside of the Sayu Lin and launch. Deploy. All right. Need to center my head tracking. Okay. So we're just gonna turn that off. Just do a little bit of flying around. So, well, there was a, uh, like, little thing I wanted to practice, which is like that. No, that's too much. So, the, um, in combat, it's like a S maneuver or whatever, where you turn your ship 
and then you like go this direction and you would turn your ship and go the opposite direction so like it 45s oh boy Interesting. Let's go ahead and turn this back on. So... This doesn't feel as maneuvery as I was seeing in the videos. It could be the fact that I'm in the Sayulin, but... Um, let's turn coupled mode off. over this way. Let's not collide. Let's begin some just station maneuvering. Be coupled control. Like this. Just trying to orbit the station. Nice and smooth controls. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull back and actually match rotation here. Come on, back up. Is this even rotating? Does this station even rotate? I don't think it does. Well, that's lame. How do I practice matching orbit if I can't even rotate? Just practice orbiting like this. Nice, that's smooth. Let's go ahead and try doing the same thing but in reverse. Goody, good, good. I want to get better at dog fighting. But Okay, we'll go ahead and quit this, and we'll go back and try and do some VLRTs now. <sighs> okay, and Persistent Universe. Let's see if the uh, elevators will be bugged again. Start up task manager so I can get OBS up and running. So Knuckles, if you're still there, um, might actually be. What did you get during IAE? OK. 
check. Elevator. Yay, the elevators are working. You know what that means. We can actually do a tracker mission. So we'll come into here. Contracts. And first things first. Mercenary. Call to arms. Always gotta accept it for the sweet tiny creds. Here we go. Bounty hunter. Okay, well, the mission's not showing up, unfortunately. So uh, we'll give it a second to spawn. Uh, let's see, which way do I go to get out of here? Here? Then over here? Hello, sir. The ASOC vehicle retrieval system. So I'm gonna take the Sayulin out. Vehicles, your vehicle has been saved. He had enough for an endeavor this time. Crazy, I know, but I think it will go up in price like crazy. So it doesn't take ten more years for it to release the the endeavor. What is the endeavor? I should probably know, but uh or who who makes it? go and get the tracker license because it's probably going to take me all across the universe. Hurston, okay. Let me actually look up the Endeavor. What is the Endeavor? Uh, Endeavor, Star Citizen. Big modular ship by Misk. Huh, oh, it's got like, what are those? It's got like, habitation wings? How much is the Endeavor? What the heck? Is it like it like looks like it could be a generation ship or like a like a f massive floating garden? That's crazy. Can't imagine what uh, you spent on that. <laughs> All right, let's go hangar one. Three hundred and fifty for the bit. That's actually not too bad for the size of ship that that is. Oh, the modules are sold separately. So are they selling the modules right now as well, or is it just the base? What are you even planning on doing with that? Like, like you gonna? Yeah, I, I don't even know what you're gonna do with that. Yeah, like, what, what modules are available? Like, I assume that there would be, um, like, a refining module if you wanted to. Um, I, I imagine there would actually be several ways those modules could go. You are clear to launch. Alright, let's go ahead and just... Ah, oh gosh, the Sayulin is such a beautiful-looking ship. Let's go ahead and increase my decoy count. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's turn off coupling. Let's get to the skyline. Now we Thank want you. to actually go to our contracts. Accepted. Let's track the tracker license certification. Got the skyline. Set route to the target's location. Wow, the uh, skyline is bugged. Okay, we have the route set. I do love the Sayulin's um, quantum drive range. Super convenient. Okay. 
selling it at... Hold on, I need to move the chat a little bit closer. Once I get Quantum going. And... That was... Uh, okay, so I need to come into here, select this, Control shift z bring the chat just a little bit closer. Let's see, they're selling it for two, it's 200 meters long. That's, uh, that, it looks like it should be longer than 200 meters. Granted, it is super wide. Um, but, yeah, they could reconcept it to be bigger. Um... The hanger could hold two cutty reds. That would be a massive hanger. Imagine how many furies you could fit inside of that. <laughs> Just turn a colony ship into a uh, mobile carrier. I uh, It's really too bad I wasn't streaming it last night. Me and uh, one of my friends, um, Ducks, we were... Uh, Oh, we were dogfighting in two furies, probably for close to 45 minutes, just because we could not kill each other because of how tiny that ship is. It's absolutely insane. All right, well, there's no point sitting here and staring, even though the uh, Sayulin's quantum animation is very very cool have you uh have you had a chance to uh look at the inside of the um Sayulin? knuckles drop knuckles fpv one of them um it's really such a cool ship i hope that they design more ships with an elevator like my favorite science fiction show is absolutely The Expanse. And so having a ship that is actually like properly uh, rocket shippy would just be so cool to have. Um, I know it's maybe not the most efficient use of, use of space. Although, actually, if you just had an elevator like this, but on a wider ship, it was um, like, yeah, just like wider, even if it only had like five decks for like a class C or a size four type of ship, that would be really, really cool. And it might actually be a more effective use of space because the hallways on a lot of the uh, ships are not actually that useful. Okay. Weapon and component overclocking, space exploration, mobile hospital. It's going to be so interesting to see the gameplay loops that are in place in like 10 years. And I say 10 years because that's probably how long it's going to take to start realizing some of that. But like, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Oh, you got the Sayulin? The Sayulin is probably going to be the most owned ship in Star Citizen. Um, like, I, I feel like everybody I know either has one or wants to get one. Okay, so you'll notice my head is a little bit offset right now. I'm going to hop into the Steam VR view and check. I have lost centering, so this will happen sometimes. No, wait, I didn't mean to do that. Ah, uh, stop. Disable motion compensation. Um, sometimes, for whatever reason, it just, like, motion compensation on some nights just decides to hallucinate. Um, or maybe it's my headset that's hallucinating. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm just recentering my Steam stuff. All right, that looks good. And then re-enabling motion compensation. Hopefully it'll move me to the right spot. Yeah, we'll see. 
Um, okay, wait. So where is my bounty target? Right over here. Okay, so we need to get the aerial. So let's get this orbital marker. Looks like motion compensation is not going to be nice to me tonight. Um, because you'll see I'm to the left right now, and it's going to keep having me shift around. 5170 on the Endeavor. I spent like another 280 on Mod. <laughs> Isn't that insane what we pay for this? Like, at the very least, in gacha games, um, you get something when you pay for it instead of just, like, concepts that may be wildly different from what you expect by the time they actually come out. I mean, somehow CIG has made it a working business model, but sometimes I'm like, why do we allow this? <laughs> but you know what? As someone who is a uh, relatively long-time gacha player... It's kind of one of those things where it's like, is it shady business practice? Yeah, probably. But at the end of the day, um, I'm the one that enables it. So can I really blame them? That's just human nature, baby. <laughs> if I really hated it that much, I just wouldn't buy it. Yeah, Flight Simulator, I mean, in on the other hand, right? I've spent, you know, Quest Pro, I bought the Quest Pro at launch, okay? I'm one of those suckers. The yaw, okay, I'm backer like 23 for the yaw, so it was not actually that expensive relative to a lot of other um, motion simulators, especially for, yeah, adult money, right? Well, I do have a kid coming, so that's going to change things a little bit. Although, probably, my guess is is that uh, my, by the time the child is actually born, my income should also be significantly higher. So, of course, you know, if everything goes according to plan, which, oh, isn't always the case. I almost just hit that. Okay, getting closer to SCM speed. It's going to keep breaking. Okay, cannons are good. Tumlin, where are you? A shanty guy, something or other. Why does it do that sometimes? Yep, there goes one. Let's go get the next guy. Trevi? Oh, is that my target? Trey, don't you run from me. Let me kill you. Come on. Hello. Okay, there goes another. Let's go ahead and start breaking. Where is he? Okay, let's go ahead and come this way. Ooh, congratulations on the two month old. That's always exciting. Is it a boy or a girl? Or actually, before I ask, is it a boy or a girl? Did you want a boy or did you want a girl? <laughs> I 
of course, you know, even if you have a preference of like, you know, you want a girl or you want a boy, you're still going to love the kid the same either way, right? At least if you're a decent person. No, uh, no knocking the people that aren't decent people, but yeah, like, doesn't matter if the kid is the sex that you were gunning for, um, you're a bad person if you don't still love them the same anyways. <laughs> or maybe, maybe not necessarily a bad person, just there's something wrong with you. Okay, well, Crusader, I can't get to you. One of your goals with the endeavor is to grow space drugs and so Ooh. Oh, that's good. That's nice. No preferences. That's that's probably the best way to go. Unfortunately, I'm not that way. But that's all right. Um Yeah, drug trade's going to be really interesting once um, once, uh, like, if you can actually grow your own drugs, space farming. Yeah, space farming. All right, I'm going to have to just clear this route and get to the other side of Crusader. It's orbital marker. Do, 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 do. If the Endeavor is the big ship that you have, um, what, like, smaller ships do you have as, like, daily drivers? Or do you have a daily driver? Other than the Sayulin, because obviously the Sayulin counts as a daily driver as well. Let's get the Crusader... You have a hope to have a girl next. At least a couple years from now. Uh, I'm... So we probably... I think that... I have a feeling that once we have, like, the first two kids, I'll probably want to keep having more. Um, but the limit is probably going to be the misses on how many kids we end up having. Because... Um, Obviously, her body's the one that has to deal with it, so, you know, I can say, you know, I'll financially support as many as you want to have, but I have a feeling that the max we'll end up with is three. Um, at least uh, unless something drastically changes with her disposition, which, which is fine, you know, um, at least, you know, from there, we're at least doing, you know, population replacement levels, and it gives us time to give each child a good amount of attention. Um, but we'll probably try to have them as close in age as possible so that they can be each other's friends. Okay, so you'll use your Sayulin as the home. Oh, wait. Uh, so as your daily driver, but you have the Hornet Ghost and a Fury. The Hornet Ghost... That's a stealth fighter, right? What's... There, I feel like there's so many different variations of the Hornet, and I can't keep track of what each of them do, slash are. Oh, you know what? I have, like, $35 of store credit still. I should buy some Sayulin skins. Because some of the Sayulin skins look really good. I mean, not that the um, Sayulin is bad looking default, but like there's a lot of different ways you can accent this marble. Also, it is a bit of a shame that the Sayulin is such a like has such a chonky profile when you're looking at somebody. Um, like horrible, horrible dogfighting ship. In that regard, it's probably like one of the worst starter ships for at least PvP combat. Granted, if you're doing PvP combat, uh, probably shouldn't be using a starter ship anyways. Um, 
but like for the size of it, it's got way, well, I mean, only two less cargo than the Avenger Titan. Um, but I guess it does have maneuverability going for it. So. Yeah, such an interesting. The quantum travel looks way cooler too than all the other all the other ships. I don't like how different it is. They really need to introduce better uh, landing instruments, though. Um, if they had something like they had in uh, Elite Dangerous, that would be great. They upgrade the Ghost of the Scorpion. I love the Scorpion. So I had a Scorpion in the past. Um, that's why my thumbnail is my chair basically just cut on top of Scorpion, Scorpius. Um, but I ended up melting it, so at some point I might... Uh, I, I have the buyback token for it, but... I have not seen the Banu Defender Quantum. Um, maybe I should look it up. How would you describe what the Banu Quantum looks like? Gosh, I... <laughs> I wish there was a way to have lower latency on the chat. Um, it's, it, it's a combination of latency from the chat to the stream being viewed by you. So it's more latency on the stream than it is late, latency from your chat. Um, but is what it is, right? Got this here. Hello, Crusader! On the run, we're gonna get space whales. It's cool. I'll have to uh, check out a YouTube video of it once I'm... Once I'm back. Alright, let's do this MRT. Okay... Where is this buddy? Alright, he's close by. Alright, so we're gonna need to get to this orbital marker. Why? I feel like performance at Crusader is always the best. But I feel like it shouldn't necessarily be because it's just my gameplay style, but I find that I personally spend most of the game at Crusader. Um, maybe other people don't. But I just, like, the performance here is so much better than at Microtech just because servers, right? Um, that's one thing that I'm, I'm, I really think even though server meshing is going to introduce a lot of bugs, I feel like the performance of this game is going to be so much better once server meshing is a thing. Um, cause like the biggest thing that honestly turns me off from playing Star Citizen is not the bugs, but is the terrible performance especially when I have all this extra overhead going on and you know head tracking feels a lot more nauseating when I am inside of like head a head track screen like this as compared to um just oh no okay I'm good sorry I thought I had a uh um Screen. Oh, okay, there they are. It was so white on the planet that I couldn't see. I need to go to the orbital marker. Miner's Lament. Very green, okay. Because I, I would describe the Siulans as very green too, but I'll need to, um... Yeah, I, I know, I, I saw your uh, first, your second chat before the first one, so all I saw was I think it's the coolest. Let's get to Kane's last known position. And let's murder Kane. Gosh, this Sayulin's acceleration is insane. I should probably have started breaking sooner. Hmm. 
Wait, what? Trespassing? This missile really wants me. Okay. Alright. We're slowed down. How's my ship? It's okay. Alright, let's go ahead and get this guy. <laughs> Gosh. That was insane. Silent, you can do this. Come on, little hornet, you can. Are gonna collide with? I guess his buddies are gone. <sighs> Alright, let's go ahead and get out of here. Take the next one. Oh, look at that! It's in the same asteroid belt. That's good. Yeah, this time I'm gonna start breaking at the appropriate time. Let's go ahead and drop the number of decoys that I launch. Let's begin breaking. What do you mean, leave a risk? Whatever. It's actually... It's some missiles. Ooh. Another. Hi there, bud. Got a surprise for ya. I love it when they just stand still. While well, I'm being shot at. Is that a, what is that? Is that one of those like super maneuverable ships? Why did it feel like that was not charging very quickly? I need to 
work on my power management. Is that all of them? Looks like it. Yeah, go ahead and go this way. Okay. Just keep doing these MRTs. Probably we'll just do one more and then get ready for bed. The Sylan needs more MFDs. That's probably the thing that I feel like it's missing the most. Ship over there. Oh no, it's one of these. Alright, we'll go to security post therapy and then that should get us relatively close to Dagway. It's gonna be great when master modes are available and you can just do the little short quantum jump thing all the way. To where the bad guys are. Okay, let's go ahead and oof, start making our way over. Some um, low altitude flying though. Oh, this place basically has no atmosphere. Yikes, not good. Not good. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool just to see how that how the master modes and everything affect just like all aspects of gameplay. How do I increase my missile count? Um, yeah, I don't know how to increase my missile count. Oh, is that a glaive? Ooh, a glaive! Fight them for, for real over here. Come on, buddy. We're gonna... We're gonna switch to that instead. Asshole. Yeah, you call me an asshole. Okay, next one. Let's go get him. He's as good as gone. Having a hard time maneuvering there, bud. Yeah. I bet you are. There you go. Or maybe not. Oh. Oh gosh. 
It's really disorienting. I need to take care of my shields. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just land. Um, and then... Yeah, this is a decent clearing. Just landing gear. And go ahead and come to a relative stop. All right, this looks good. So we're just going to come close to a full stop. I have decoupled mode on, so gonna face 90 and touchdown okay go ahead and turn our engines off leave our seat well thank you for joining for basically the entire stream prop um I guess before I go, do you have any uh, any last thing you'd like to uh, say into the chat? I'll give you about two minutes or so while I'm logging out. Oh, that's too far down. I guess, is there anything specifically you'd like to see me do with this chair? I wonder if it's even going to let me log out. Nope, because I'm apparently in combat. Well, you get more time to think of a, think of something. Because <laughs> of course, thinks I'm logged out when I'm not actually logged out. It's almost entirely. Nothing particular with the setup. Yeah, nice chatting with you too. I'll just be getting out of here and logging off soon. Um, all right, uh, let's turn engines back on. <laughs> Taking off is so cool. Oh, that's such a cool ship. Alright, well, let's go ahead and just get myself into one of the orbital markers. Engines off, back out of the seat. Could I give us what I can? But yeah, oh, <laughs> that's right. You're in like the worst time for dealing with a baby. I'm gonna finish what I was saying in this uh, chat because basically, like, and I don't know what they're trying to say that the server and client side FPS is different. Your FPS in this game is almost entirely dependent on what the server, like, load is under. Oh, 
All right, okay, let's go ahead and log out. And quit game. Let's go ahead and undo my belt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully in the future, CIG will allow us to have proper telemetry support. Although that would also be terrifying when you get into um like when you crash into something and get into insane like spins. Um <laughs> that might burn out the motors in whatever your simulator is. this slide you forward <sighs> yeah so one final kind of view to showcase how getting in and out works with the rails just slides in like that then I lock it so yeah let's go ahead and Kill the droid cam client. Put on the ending title screen. And uh, we will call it a night. Thanks for joining.